What's up guys, your man Chef from Off The Dome, back with another video. Today we're here to talk about The weekend and the Grammys and the Super Bowl fiasco and why I think that he made the correct decision to perform at the Super Bowl. Anyone who looks at numbers, just pure numbers, knows that the Super Bowl will do 100 mil plus. Even with coronavirus and the uh, decline of ratings of the NBA playoffs and maybe NFL games, I think the Super Bowl could still pull in a good 70 million viewers to 80 million. They might still do 100 mil, but I'm just due for corona time since people can't go there live in person. I'm going to say 80 million if we want to go that low. 80 million, 70 million, 50 million, 40 million, 30 million. If they go down to 20 million, that is still three or four times more than what the Grammys will get. The Grammys are doing 6 million and 7 million viewers. I'm sorry. Being in front of 100 million people versus being in front of 7 million is a way better gamble. I don't care if you don't give me album of the year. Because, let's be honest, Taylor Swift, The Weeknd, Roddy Rich, and Lil Baby have the best selling albums of the year. No question. The Weeknd, overall, I think, other than Lil Baby and Taylor Swift, I think he's the third best selling album of the year. Right behind, I mean, right above Roddy Rich. So The Weeknd already has the money. Blind Lights has been the biggest single of all time in the top 10. It's probably the number one single of the year. This song is probably certified eight to nine times platinum at this point. If we did have tours, The Weeknd would have a record tour. Well, for it's a corona. So The Weeknd is basically the biggest R&B pop act in the world right now. Other than Till Swift, Juice World, and I believe BTS... No, no, I'm sorry, not BTS. Other than Taylor Swift and Juice World, no one has sold more than The Weeknd this year in album sales first week. Nobody. The Weeknd did, I believe, 430, 440-something K. BTS did 422. Harry Styles did 409. Those are great numbers. But all this time later, those albums are still on the chart, of course. But The Weeknd's are still doing great numbers, too, in the top 50, like 30 weeks down the line. It's almost certified two times platinum. It's at 1.8 million copies. So, ladies and gentlemen, the weekend shouldn't have to be forced to do the Grammys or the Super Bowl. No logical person, no logical team would say, hey, I wouldn't even negotiate the Grammys. You know why? Because even though you get that slight boost to album sales and stuff after the Grammys, hello, after the Super Bowl, you're single and go back to the top 10, a.k.a. Lady Gaga's Million Reasons, a.k.a. Bruno Mars' re-debut of his songs on the chart, a.k.a. his spike in sales and making one of his albums go number one that previously debuted number three. You don't... Like, the Grammys will do good things for you, yes. Cardi B's numbers went up a little bit in 2019. So did Casey Musgraves, yes. When Bruno won album of the year, it did a little something for him. But overall, it's not going to be the same push the Super Bowl gives you. You're in front of hundreds of millions of people, or 80 million plus that we're going to go by this year. First of all, we know the music industry doesn't get the same amount of album sales and single sales as they used to. So what's a better chance to get you in front of older people, younger people, middle-aged people than just do the Grammys where basically going to be either some old heads or some young music geeks watching you. There's only 7 million of them. And you get a couple of articles on Complex and XXL Hip Hop and Vanity about you winning the Grammy and Billboard covering you. And then after that week, your buzz is gone. The Super Bowl performance is a lifetime memory. Don't get me wrong. Grammy has its moments, but the Super Bowl performance, if it's done right, people will talk about it. For years to come. They still talk about Aerosmith. They still talk about Prince. They still talk about Madonna. And that wasn't even a great performance. But it was decent. They like seeing Madonna. They still talk about Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars performance at the Super Bowl was his biggest career moment. That's the point. I believe that was 2013 or 14. I forgot. I watched that game. I think it was 2013. When Bruno Mars performed at the Super Bowl. He was already a decent pop star. He was a superstar. But he wasn't a megastar. After performing the Super Bowl, it propelled his career uptown funk. That's what I like. 24 Karat Magic. His album, 24 Karat Magic, going three times platinum, being the second best selling album of the whole year of 2017. Finesse with Cardi B. More and more hits on hits. He became that guy. So I'm saying to the weekend, you've already made yourself a big honcho in the game. You're already that big guy. Don't let the Grammys try to tear you down. Go to the Super Bowl, perform in front of millions of people on TV, and do this to the Grammys. Because guess what? They're going to have 5 to 7 million viewers. And you're going to be in front of 60, 70, 80 million people. So anyway, this is your man, Chef from Off the Dome. I hope you like this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.